job for her. You know what I mean? It's three years go by, and there's nothing. And then, so a lot of it's timing. Right. Um, and that's also why we encourage you know, our candidates. Every All staffing agencies have slightly different agreements. But so it's like the moment I make a, a rule here, it's going to be broken by a different agency. But for the most part, the agreements that we have are non-exclusive. So when you work with Creative Circle, you can work with other staffing agencies. Um, and we really encourage our candidates to be as aggressive as they want to be and work with as many agencies as they like. Because again, lots of it's timing. Sometimes, uh, you know, I don't know who you guys have heard, but you know, Zolt or um, you know, a Filter or different agencies have a job that they're working on or a client that they're working with a lot that maybe we're not working with at the time. So it's good to you know put as many feelers out there as you as you want to. Um, and we just, you know, as an agency, we just ask that our candidates keep good records of where they've been you know, submitted by other agencies and um, where you interview. So have you guys already started applying places? If so, kind of what objections or feedback are you getting from people as far as places go? Yeah. I have one that uh, said the feedback was they were looking for somebody more senior than myself. Huh. Say that again, Chris. That I, they were looking for somebody more junior. More junior. So, you know, I'm like, oh, is that age discrimination? <laughs> or, you know what I mean? Like, or am I asking for too much money? Or, right. Because I've been in the industry over 20 years. Right. So I have a, a serious amount of experience here. Right. So I'm not starting from scratch. Um, I did come back to Cascadia to do the web development. Um, <coughs> deal with Brian here. So I thought that was really interesting. Like yeah. I'm like, no, they're looking for somebody more junior. Yet when I had talked to this recruiter, they were like, oh, you sound like a perfect fit. So it's really difficult to like understand mm -hmm. what people tell you and what's reality. Like, sure, so you want to be like, yeah, I'm a perfect fit, and that's like, oh, you're too yeah. young. And that's a constant struggle for, <laughs> for me too. Yeah, on the yeah. recruiting side, because. We get the job description and we talk with the client, what are you looking for, okay, and then go out and look for people, find the, you know, what we think is a perfect fit. I mean, it's happened to me just this morning, too. Yeah. Um, and then it gets to the client and they're like, well, I actually want somebody that's more of this level, or I want somebody that's more of a writer rather than a designer. Well, that's not what you said initially. Right. So, I mean, it's the ebb of the, uh, the, ebb of the flow. I mean, they might have started looking out for somebody with Right. And then, kind of after reevaluating things and seeing the type of people they were getting, they were like, "Well, actually, somebody more junior that we can kind of mentor and mold into the position." Yeah, I'm like, "They need less money." Is what they <laughs> want. Like, you know, Did you guys talk <laughs> money? What? Was there money involved in it, or did they just see your resume? Do you think they thought, "Oh, she's gonna be just fine." Oh, we yeah. talked about money. I mean, like, what is your raise? Mm -hmm. Right. And I gave them a range, and they're like, "Oh, that." Right. And, so. it, and when we get a job, we always talk about the, with the client about money. Um, what sort of you know rate range are you working in right now? What sort of you know price do you want to see people at? Yeah. Um, sometimes they, they give us that dollar range. Um, sometimes it's you know I want to see people at 25 to 30 an hour. I want to see people anywhere from 25 to 45 an hour. Okay. Well, you're opening yourself up to why for any kid. Right. So sometimes they say I don't know. Just send me who you think would be good for this. But sometimes. The that wants $45 an hour would be willing to work a job for $25 yeah. an hour. Mm -hmm. I guess that's part of the, you know, like. Yeah. And we're seeing that a lot in this economy, and it's yeah. really a hard one to, to come back from. It's a fight that I fight constantly, yeah. because they don't want, I think our clients are afraid that if you put a more senior person in a junior role, they're going to fail at the next opportunity, great opportunity that they get. Yeah. So, which is silly. Um, but it's also kind of why we can be helpful too. Right. We can have those conversations with them and say, no, she's in a really unique position right now. Um, I have a candidate myself that's been um, a, like a, a VP type. She just moved here from Chicago. She's looking for something with a more work-life balance. So she's wanting to step down. But it's been hard to come back from that VP title. Sure. And we've had those conversations. But you know, even though we know that you'd be great for it, Sometimes the client's just not willing to go there. Which is yeah. Tough. And I mean, it's, we 
we definitely work a lot as a team to, to package things in a way that's going to make the most sense for that particular client. I mean, that is one thing to keep in mind when we are, you know, at least with us when we're presenting a candidate to a job, we definitely, we're, we're doing everything to put our best and their best foot forward given the job description that we have. Um, and also what's good is it's not just a random replying Craigslist where right, you, know, you don't get anything back or you don't hear anything or don't know what an objection even is. Um, you know, we are really, when we send a candidate, you know, we're, we're fighting for them and we're pushing back, you know, when we can. Um, so there's definitely more of a, a, a back and forth conversation, trying to get feedback, making a case for someone. And, um, but it definitely does happen. And we, we get jobs where we think we know, sign, seal, deliver, we know exactly what the client wants. We know the rate, we know exactly the skills. We send two, three candidates, you know, it's toss up who would be the best. It's like we're excited about all of them. And then we get feedback that seems like it's out of left field, you know? And we're starting from scratch too. And one thing, especially with working with recruiters and, you know, definitely with us, but it was all of the, one thing to keep in mind as a candidate is, it's just as frustrating for us as it is for the candidates at the time, you know? Um, so we definitely feel it too, because we want to get the people, you know, the person that we thought was perfect for something, that job, you know? Yeah, it kind of raises questions of efficient levels of the kind of jobs that you do place in. Do you find most of your jobs are like the kind of freelance jobs where if you look at the one candidate who has a, a level of, of, of expertise that can completely do the entire job themselves? Mm -hmm. Or do you sometimes get jobs that have like a multi-level skills that you have to place two or three different people on different levels, some beginner skills and some more advanced skills? Do you, yeah. do you find you, most of your jobs are kind of like, like you know, you have to find someone who has skills who can do everything? That's, that's a really good question, and we get it both ways. Um, sometimes we start off with somebody that wants, you know, that whole package, which ends up being like the ASAP. Mm -hmm. um, so then what we kind of do is, we, as we look at the description, um, see if we can find that person initially that has that full skill set, and then if, if we can't, we do try to, you know, piece people together, match them up as teams, send somebody that's really strong at back-end development, followed up with somebody that's really strong at front-end development. So by hiring that, you know, those two people, they can work together to do the project, but it's not an all-in-one sort of thing. Yeah. That would raise that second part of the question yeah. would be that, too. We, you know, in our web development class kind of have to have, kind of develop teams that they, they actually learn together. Yeah. And so that we found that the, the dynamics of them sometimes, you know, as, as they work in teams, mm -hmm. some have have better skills in terms of like design, other ones are, are, are graphic design, some are, are, are better programmers or you know, coders, yeah. but they, we found that several people can work really well together. Mm -hmm. Do you ever consider like, you know, representing a, a team, team, representing a team applying for a job? We do it sometimes. Um, it's not as frequent as mm -hmm. the individual roles. Usually, for, for at least freelance stuff or project work, usually a client is coming to us because they're in the weeds and they need someone to do an HTML email, or you know what I mean? So yeah. it's very targeted. Mm -hmm. um, so for the most part, we look for individuals. Now, that being said, that information when we register someone to, you know, I've done I've done interviews where I register two people at once, you know what I mean, and, yeah. and let them know that I'm gonna be calling them about individual jobs, but it's nice to know what they worked on together, what their roles were. So if we get an opportunity um, where we could pitch them as a team, it's nice to be able to make that, make that case, essentially. Mm -hmm. um, but the times it's most successful is when the, the people that are coming in as a team or as a group understand and are okay with the fact that we've called them about individual gigs, yeah. um, but know that there might be that sort of perfect storm where we've got something that they're needed for. Mm -hmm. And then we also have things where, you know, we placed a candidate on um, a freelance gig. He's a, a flash guy, um, and he'd been doing, you know, just sort of piecemeal work here and there for this client. And then a big project came in, um, and he needed help. You know what I mean? So that's what, and he needed to create a team. So that's another um, example where we might go to someone where I, we know a group of people already that work really well together. Obviously, there's the technical requirements for, for you know, what it was. But we would call a group of people we know, or we could say to him, hey, we've got a group of, of candidates that have been working together for a year now, they know how to work with each other, they know how to communicate, these are their, this is their skill set, you should talk to them. Um, so we can also be a help there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm just curious, with the, uh, the 
job situation as it is right now, and a lot of companies outsourcing their, their low-end positions. What do you see for the entry-level market right now for people just coming out of college or still in college wanting to do um, just a, a summer job or something like yeah. that? Yeah. It, it is starting to pick back up a little bit. Um, it is hard for the junior level people to get the foot in the door, which is why it's, it's so vital to have that internship and real work experience under your belt that you can get your kind of call out to that in both your portfolio and your resume. Um, we had another part of our process I should mention too is that all of our new candidates that come in, um, we do have a, a weekly talent update it's an email that goes out to our entire client list that kind of highlights some of the latest and greatest talent that we met with. Um, and we found it really successful with our, our junior level flash engineering guy, and that was the job we were working on. Well, I put in a, uh, a junior level software engineer um, on the talent update. They saw that and said, hey, I know we're working on this role, but I kind of like this junior guy. Maybe he's somebody we can, we can train and mentor to you know, fill this type of role eventually. We still want the senior guy, but maybe we can pair them together. So that's the type of thing that I'm seeing more with, with the junior level people. And you know, some of the more harder technologies, I guess, that, that we found to, to place are the .NET Java developers, um, backend PHP stuff. It seems like those people just go super fast. So companies are starting to really open their eyes more to getting that junior talent, locking them in, training them, developing them, kind of establishing more of uh, like the work you saw you know, 10 years ago. Those people that are to stick with companies for a long period of time, rather than the people that kind of jumped every every couple of years. So it's it's been really interesting. I don't know. Yeah. Have you seen? It's definitely picking up. We're seeing more full time places than we were a year a year or two ago. Um, you know, I'd say with you know junior more entry level positions, we can't. You know, we we work on those. We fill those. Make great things happen mm -hmm. with that story. Um, you know, something to keep in mind as, as you're doing your search is, you know, with, with a staffing agency, clients are paying to work with us, right? They're paying a premium to, to work with a staffing agency. So sometimes they come to us for their more specialized positions, um, roles where they feel like they did a good search um, for entry-level candidates on their own and may want to, you know, make the savings of working with them directly rather than working with an agency. So we don't work as kind of many of those roles, at least initially. That being said, we love meeting with candidates that are in that type of um, position, as long as they're realistic about the you know the frequency of the jobs that we're going to be getting. Um, we can really be a guide on you know building portfolios out depending on the work that you're doing. Um, I'd say with you know junior more entry level candidates that we work with, you know portfolio is everything, right? Because you know solid internships are, are awesome too, but portfolio is everything because that's really going to give a client an idea of what someone. Um, is capable of. Um, so, you know, encourage candidates to do things like, you know, pro bono projects that, you know, maybe, you know, finding clients on your own, creating a website for them that shows your skills. So it builds up that freelance work that you're doing that's professional work, but um, can sort of build that case for the experience that you have. It makes us easier to, to give a specific example of here's a freelance project that he did. Um, the client is one of his references. You know, he did everything on time, on budget. Uh, they said nothing but wonderful things about this project. It's a professional project that you have in our portfolio then. And that helps us build the case for, for those jobs where um, the client's looking for someone that has, you know, a little bit more experience and we can talk about the, the freelance projects that you've done and build the case for you that way. I'd like to just make a comment on um, what you guys are talking about. Your presentation about the, the, the direct contact with both the, the client and the, the job seeker is, is very nice to hear because I've got a, a experience with a number of, of different uh, agencies that they come to you blind, they send you a posting that has nothing to do with your, your skill set. Yeah. It's like they haven't read your resume at all. And then they want to lock you in for a lowball price before you even contacted, had any contact with the employer to find out what the job was about. Right. You guys sound like the exact mirror opposite of that. And 
very appreciative. Oh, good. Well, we try to be. I mean, I came through Creative Circle as a candidate myself last year when I was a candidate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Looking to transition out of radio. You really have to. I know. <laughs> I was like in transition out of radio. I just kind of wanted to see what was out there um, before I came on internally. And it's, it's a really good process. That's really important why we need everybody in person. Um, Someone's transitioning from one career to another, and they've had maybe you know 10, 20 years in something that's not related to what they're studying mm -hmm. now at school. How should that be put on a resume? That's a really, a really good question. Um, I've met with quite a few people that have done that, um, and if you fully detail on your resume every single job that you've ever done in your entire life to you know when you were serving ice cream at Baskin. Um, that's really not what they're, they're looking for. Um, only relevant experience as to what you're, where you're looking to go in your career. Now, if you have a long job history and you're doing um, something like, this is not a realm, but like photography, and now you want to go more into video editing. I mean, those two career paths are, are somewhat related. I might just kind of do a one line about those. Like, I was the, the lead photographer for Time Magazine no need to do the big descriptions and, and bullet points for that. Um, try to keep it the resume to one to two pages if you can, and really focus on that experience as with where you're looking to go. Be kind of knowing some of your background, some of your past history it is is great, and it appeals to some clients more than, than others. Um, it's good to keep on there, but. stuff there is, the, the, the old older work experience might get minimized the more new experience there is. But there is something to be said for a proven track history, track history of working successfully, you know? Um, so, so it's important, you know, that clients know that someone's the last job someone had, they stayed there for seven years, you know, and that they stick and they, you know, they work positively with a specific company. So that's good information. Uh, that's sort of back to almost the, the, the soft skills. The old work history becomes almost a soft skill at that point, right? That you have worked professionally with people, um, have great references. Um, so it, it, you know, it goes to that. But then, depending on, you know, again, with your example of um, someone wanting to get into video editing and into doing something else, you know, how much video editing, freelance work you have that you can touch on in the resume because that's going to be more pertinent for the jobs you're applying to. Uh, more the better, right? Um, but then also to you know, make sure that 
people know that you, know, you have food or not breakfast is going to be important as well. Okay, so it should be mentioned, but not really. If it's totally unrelated to what you're applying for. You know, I mean, it, I guess what I'm saying is a lot of students are going back to the grade, they're changing, they've been forced for, for whatever reason to find new careers. And, and I'll have students come to me with great you know, background, but it's right. just unrelated to what they're yeah. studying now. So, you know, I think it's good to keep it on there because you don't want to totally negate all of that time and effort and energy that you put into those positions. But maybe mention that you're, you're yeah. making this transition. Now. Yeah, and I think that's like would be a great day. I'm not a huge like objective person for resumes, mm -hmm. um, but I think that there's a place for them when you you have you know some explaining to do, right? So it's like you know a proven industry professional in blank. You know, made transition to web development. You know, talk about the studies there, and then go into school projects that you've worked on, and internships you've had, and then walk through. You know, and short bullet points the professional experience prior to that. Okay. Um, you know, when, when I meet with a candidate that is a designer and they've been designing since they got out of the art institute, do they need an objective portion where they say that their objective is to be a designer? I don't think so. I think it's redundant. But I think that it does make sense when you want to, I think a lot of what I, I see with clients is it's, people need to tell a story to someone on a resume, right? Um, you're, you have that one page to see what someone is and why they're there and why they're applying to it. And unless that story is clear quickly, um, people move on. Um, so if it's someone who's been a designer for 10 years and it's obvious that that's their story, they're a designer, then they're, it, it's a little easier. But if there is that transition, you know, the story becomes a little bit more important. You know, what the motivation is, what the work that they've been doing is, how they got interested in it, um, and why they didn't change. Well, she kind of asked the question pretty much I had. I worked in retail for the last five years. Before that, I used to work with computers a lot, and I'm in school studying IT, but all my experience is retail. So when I apply for a job, I wouldn't want the people to see that they work in retail. It's completely unrelated to the field I'm studying right now. So how would how would I do that, apply for a job? And I have a great people skill, you know, I have great communication skills, that's what retail taught me, but at the other time, they don't want to see that on the resume. Yeah, I mean, I would keep it to like one line, like the company that you work for, and then the position is the, the date, and it does really speak to that soft skill. As you mentioned, you're a great communication skills, you're a people person. Um, I don't think I've met anyone in retail that hasn't been a people person. Um, and I've always been a big fan of, of seeing that on resumes, I think, from the food service industry. And I think that, you know, having that background and knowing what people have to go through to, you know, keep their cool in some situations, um, really, I mean, it, it calls out to me because I've been there, I've done that. Um, now, obviously, I'm in a different not to say that those hiring managers are gonna, you know, aren't gonna notice that too. So I wouldn't necessarily spend a lot of space on the page, but I, mean, I would still keep it on there, especially like Kirsten said, if it's somewhere that you've been working at for like a year plus. Yeah. If it's just been like seasonal retail gigs, I wouldn't necessarily worry about it. Mm -hmm. um, or you can generalize about it. And, and I think the sense of humor goes a long way with that sort of stuff. I had a candidate, she was. I think she just got out of school and throughout school and studies and internships and that sort of stuff. And she did have a portfolio of, of schoolwork. Um, she had been working at Starbucks. So she listed all the more pertinent info on top of her resume. And then she listed four years at Starbucks because she worked there part time throughout school. And then for the, the basically the, the skill that she had, she said something like, learn how to have a smile on my face at five in the morning. You know what I mean? And it was cute. You know, you just sort of smile, you know that she worked through school, it was charming, you know, and, and it also showed that she'd been, she's working, she's showing up for work, you know, and, and um, it's, I don't know, it's just, there's, it endears you to someone, you know, so I think that it's good to mention it, you know, to think of a creative way to say how it, how it will inform your career moving forward, um, and sort of hitting that point quickly and then moving on. And who's to say, you know, Nordstrom or some other e-commerce retailer? That.
Um, I was just curious what uh, what technologies uh, stick in your mind as being most requested for web design out of uh, Drupal, Joomla, and WordPress. Look at Drupal. <laughs> Drupal? Is that one of the ones Drupal. that's yeah. pushing the most? Yeah, I mean, we get them all, but Drupal is like the, when we get a Drupal shop, we're like, oh, you know what I mean? Because it's hard to find people that have work experience and the customized Drupal, yeah, they're available. Um, Yeah. <laughs> 